One of the most illuminating voices in understanding hidden patterns of the universe comes from David Bohm, a physicist who refused to see the universe as mere machine. He suggested that beneath the world we perceive lies an implicate order. The implicate order is a deeper level of reality in which everything is enfolded into everything else, giving rise to the explicit order we perceive as consciousness, said Bohm. To understand this unfolding, let's first start with reductionism. Reductionism is the idea that a system can be understood by examining its individual parts. Implicit in this idea is that one may have to examine something at multiple levels, looking at the parts, then the parts of the parts, and so on. Biologists study living things at various levels, from the whole body to organ systems down to cellular structure. Beyond the cellular level lie chemical interactions and agents, such as enzymes, which are organic chemical catalysts and amino acids, which are building blocks for proteins. This is already the domain of the chemist. To reduce things further, one would have to start looking into how atoms and molecules interact through chemical bonds that are dependent upon the number of electrons. But what exactly are atoms? The physicist probes further into the nature of things by shattering atoms into their constituent parts, which brings us to protons, neutrons, and finally quarks. Ironically, at this level of understanding, scientists are dependent on mathematical techniques that often bear little resemblance to the reality that we started with in the first place. Now, suppose that we wished to describe how the universe works. We could take a reductionist approach and catalog all of the different types of objects that exist, perhaps starting with galaxy clusters, hitting terrestrial life forms about midway through, and then ending with subatomic particles. But would this approach really succeed in describing the universe? In making a large list of things, it is easy to forget that the manner in which things work more often than not depends on the environment in which they exist. For example, we could describe the form of a duck in excruciating detail, but this gives us only half of the story. To really appreciate what a duck is, we should look at ducks in the air, in water, in the context of what they eat or what eats them, how they court, the social structures they form, how they flock, and their need to migrate. Let's take this idea further by examining a single ant. By itself, an ant's behavior is not very mysterious. There is a very small number of tasks that any ant has to do in the course of its lifetime. Yet, when we consider the ant colony as a whole, the behavior becomes much more complex. The physical structures that ants build often contain thousands of passageways and appear maze-like to human eyes, but are easily navigated by the inhabitants. The important thing to realize is that an ant colony is more than just a bunch of ants. All of these examples are emergent in that they contain simple units that, when combined, form a more complex whole. Now we come to the first awakening of this video. This is a case of the whole of the system being greater than the sum of the parts, which is a fair definition of holism, the very opposite of reductionism. We also know that agents that exist on one level of understanding are very different from agents on another level. Cells are not organs, organs are not animals, and animals are not species. Yet, surprisingly, the interactions on one level of understanding are often very similar to the interactions on other levels. How do collectives such as ant colonies, human brains, and economic markets self-organize to create enormously complex behavior that is much richer than the behavior of the individual component units? The answers to these questions are apparently related to one simple fact. Nature is frugal. Of all the possible rules that could be used to govern the interactions among agents, scientists are finding that nature often uses the simplest. More than that, the same rules are repeatedly used in very different places. I've been playing around with Brilliant, and honestly it's one of the most fun ways I've ever trained my brain. They were also kind enough to reach out and sponsor this video. If you are curious, you can go through their visual algebra course. At first, it looks simple. You're just moving shapes, spotting sequences. 
But then you realize this is literally how nature builds. One pattern folds into another, and suddenly you see symmetry, echoes, harmonies, just like the way the cosmos mirrors itself at every scale. So, if you're into exploring patterns and the deeper logic of reality, Brilliant can teach you how to see the world differently. It kind of sneaks into your daily rhythm, you can do 10 minutes on the laptop or phone, and it feels like mental espresso. You can scan the little QR rune on your screen, or just hit the link below. That unlocks free learning to get you started. And if you want to go full wizard mode, Brilliant is giving you 20% off a premium subscription. But let's return to the first awakening. No single neuron contains consciousness, only the network pulses create the appearance of mind. Reductionism thereby demonstrates what mystics said for centuries. The essence of things cannot be captured in a fragment. This is the nature of complex systems. Every complex system behaves like a mirror. The branching of your veins repeats the branching of rivers, which repeats the branching of galaxies. The firing of a neuron resonates with the firing of entire societies, exchanging ideas. The dance of planets echoes in the rhythms of breath. Reductionism shows you the leaf. The second awakening, as above, so below, shows you the tree reflected in every vein of that leaf. Complexity thrives on this mirroring. Feedback loops in an ecosystem resemble feedback loops in a mind. Fractals repeat across scales, so the smallest unit carries the shape of the vast. The motion of a flock of birds arises from the same rules that guide swarms of cells, or even human crowds. Reality reveals itself as layered repetition, a self-similar unfolding. So the noble truth is this, the smallest action is never just small. Every gesture, thought or choice participates in a larger harmony. When you act at your scale, the universe responds at its scale. To see this is to move beyond reduction and into reflection. You realize you are both detail and totality, an atom carrying the signature of the cosmos. Complex systems reveal patterns that span scales, where every unit participates in the intelligence of the whole. Coral polyps build reefs whose architecture sustains countless forms of life. Ants cooperate to create colonies that solve problems no single ant could approach. Neurons fire in networks that generate awareness. Each unit expresses local action, yet collectively they manifest rhythms, structures and flows that mirror larger patterns across the system. The principle as above, so below, unfolds naturally here. The same dynamics appear in galaxies, forests and social networks. Each microcosm contains the echo of the macrocosm, and the macrocosm resonates through the microcosm. Consciousness itself participates in this reflection, sensing patterns, amplifying interactions, and aligning its focus with the probabilities embedded in the whole. Emergence and resonance converge to form a living mirror. Individual actions, thoughts, and choices participate in a vast choreography reflecting and shaping realities both immediate and expansive. Attention flows through the system, shaping outcomes as surely as neurons shape thought or bees shape the hive. In this way, the universe mirrors itself in every layer, and awareness finds its place within a continuum that stretches from the smallest unit to the largest pattern. The hermetic axiom, as above, so below, assumes correspondence between layers. Here, the whole reveals itself in each of its fragments. An isolated neuron does not know imagination, but networks of billions dream myths and philosophies. Thus, while reductionism clarifies the bricks, as above, so below reveals the cathedral. It suggests that to know reality is to hold both lenses at once the precise scalpel of reduction and the infinite mirror of correspondence. In this integration, science and esoteric wisdom finally converge, because both seek pattern, rhythm, and order, one through dissection, the other through resonance. In this view, thought serves communion, 
The mind becomes a vessel, not a factory. It receives impressions with reverence, not with greed. Logic turns into art. Perception becomes meditation. And the world responds in kind. Vivid, intelligent, awake. Consider the early experiments of Nikolai Bernstein, who strapped dancers in black leotards, painted their joints with white dots, and filmed them moving. When he analyzed the dots mathematically, he discovered that the patterns of movement could predict the dancer's next motions before they happened. The body, in its physicality, was already whispering the poetry of thought, long before conscious attention tried to control it. The mind, when quiet and receptive, tunes into these hidden rhythms as if receiving instructions from a universal orchestra. If you take this personally, it changes everything. Life stops feeling like a puzzle to solve and starts feeling like a conversation you are part of. You notice small things, a glance from a stranger, a phrase in a book, the timing of events. And suddenly these details carry weight, as if the world is speaking directly to you. Your thoughts are no longer factories pumping out conclusions. They are vessels catching patterns, intuitions, whispers of what the next step might be. Every choice you make, every habit you cultivate, every moment of attention becomes part of a larger rhythm. You realize that you are not separate from the currents of life. Your awareness participates in shaping them. Moments that once felt random begin to feel meaningful, aligned with something deeper that you sense, but cannot always name. Looking for truth becomes personal because it is not about acquiring facts, but about learning to read the subtle language of your own experience, to recognize patterns, to see the reflection of the universe in your daily life. You start noticing how your inner clarity draws outer clarity, how being present and receptive changes what appears in front of you. Every day becomes a laboratory, every thought a tool, every encounter a mirror. Truth in this light is intimate. It is not somewhere out there. It is woven into the texture of your life, waiting for your attention, waiting for your mind to open as a vessel. When you feel it personally, life starts speaking in patterns you can touch. The small coincidences, the fleeting moments of insight, even the frustrations become messengers. You notice that certain thoughts pull toward clarity, while others drift like noise, and you begin to sense the invisible architecture beneath your daily experience. Your mind shifts from a factory churning conclusions to a vessel holding subtle impressions. Decisions no longer feel like isolated choices. They feel like stepping into a current that is already moving, one that you participate in shaping. You recognize that the people you meet, the events that unfold, even the obstacles, our mirrors are reflecting aspects of your consciousness back at you. That argument with a friend may carry a lesson about patience. Sudden opportunity may echo a readiness in your own mind. The world begins to feel alive, responsive, almost conscious in its own way, because your perception participates in its unfolding. You learn that attention is creative. What you focus on, nurture and notice, expands. Patterns crystallize around it. Searching for truth becomes deeply personal because it is all learning how to feel the currents, hear the subtle cues, and move with them. You realize your inner clarity shapes outer clarity. Your moods, focus, and awareness act as instruments, and the universe plays a melody in resonance with them. The act of living transforms. Breakfast becomes a meditation. A conversation becomes a study. A walk becomes a rehearsal of presence. Every micro-moment carries weight, every gesture ripples outward, and you see that reality is alive, intelligent, and waiting for your participation. You start to feel that seeking truth is less about arriving somewhere, and more about being attuned, listening and noticing how the smallest reflection of awareness in yourself mirrors the grand patterns of existence. You understand that the hidden patterns are not secrets to uncover, but dances to join. And the more you join, 
the more the universe itself seems to lean in, ready to respond.